you know, I have this image of, in my head of being on a hill, looking around behind me, and being surrounded by a maze. When you're in it, you can't tell you're in it. All you see are walls, and you don't know how to get out. Suddenly, I turned around, and I looked, and I thought, this is where I've been since I was 10 years old. And I thought, I never want to go back to this. When you grow up in a home where there's an alcoholic, you become incredibly vigilant. Everything that the addict says to you becomes a threat. They destroy anybody close to them. So the idea of, of a metaphor of a maze became a kind of a core idea to describe a clinical condition of limited perspective, emotionally flattened human experience, and being afraid of how my abilities impacted other people. So I had already developed this tendency to want to see from above, to kind of know where the threat was. So I became a map maker, and I set it in a valley that had been turned into a prison. There's a, a totally anal retentive Dutch engineer who's logical to the last. His name is uh, Jabez van Drayden. Second guy is Francois Desardes, and he's an environmentalist and a total airhead. <laughs> he loves plants. He just loves to live life. The third character is a Chinese woman who's an empath. Her name is Chin Sum and she is from the valley originally. Two of those three characters, after having been there as children and left, they come back as adults to find somebody who turns out to be the overlord of the garden. And you never really see him, but you see his forces at work. When they get there, they realize they've got to get out. This character you never see called Lord Carver sends in five hang glider pilots to get them, and their job is is to stir up a revolt and to persuade people that are on this island to go that way. Read the code on the stones and go in that direction. You can see another one of the pilots reading the code with one of his lights. And he carries a camping pack that has these flashlight torches in it. And every time he hands one out, they replicate. It's like loaves and fishes. And then he decides, OK, he can't talk. He decides, I'm going to give you a picture. And he juggles lights in the dark. It would look like absolute chaos, except that jugglers, if they're good, don't drop them. The five color pieces were done first, and they went one, two, three, and what is now five. And I got to five, and I realized that I'd left out the one trial that everybody in life, in every story on the world, has to face, and that's death. And in spite of everything we think we, think we know as Christians about what's after death, we really have no idea where we're going. And sooner or later, everybody's going to face it. So if you look, there's thousands of these people with flashlights trapped in a corner, and they realize they're all going to get slaughtered there unless they get out. And they discover that there's a wire rigged to cross this cataract. And Chin Sum, who happens to know how to balance a yoke, she puts two lamps in them, puts her hat on, and walks out on the wire and disappears into the fog. <laughs> I just, I just love this image. If you're inside a mobile and everything is spinning, you have no idea if you're coming or going. Nothing looks like there's any order or control to it at all. It looks like chaos. It's a bit like living in a home a family with an alcoholic. But the thing about a mobile is it's perfectly balanced. It has a point of suspension, and if you take one piece out, the whole thing goes, the Lord knows, how to balance all the pieces of his people. It doesn't look very orderly and tidy. It looks incredibly beautiful, but incredibly messy. So they hang a mobile. It's a picture of that journey. It's sort of like the juggler of the lights. It looks like chaos, but it's not. And if you, then if you look in the reflection in the pool, you'll see the reflection of an invading army of hang gliders. <clears throat> They're all waiting for someone to arrive, and it's the person that who sent the messengers and the, and the hang glider pilots ahead. And they go back and recover the garden. You don't overcome trauma without help, without someone stronger than yourself. The idea of the self-made person is an illusion. I would say we haven't got to the tightrope yet, but I think the church is about to experience incredible testing, especially when it's already happening in other parts of the world. So who do we think we are in our upper middle class sanctuary here? Do you think we're going to be spared it? I don't think so.